iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Soleil, welcome to iHeartRadio Broadway. Thank you so much. So excited so, to be here. Before we get started, I have to say I'm going to fangirl out for just a hot second because you were on probably my most played cast album to date. Uh, I've been obsessed with songs for New World, the encore recording, since oh, it came God. out. And I probably, I, it, it, I will say it's probably my most listened to on my phone. Oh my gosh, that means the world to me. I actually, this past year, I think Songs for New World kind of, there's something a little bit timeless about it, but especially this past year, it tapped into a lot of the feelings that we were absolutely we having. And I think it was a little bit of a, a, a somewhat cathartic musical experience for people over the past year and a half. But thank you so much for telling me of that. Of course. Between the, between the four of you on that cast recording, I swear it is just such beautiful music made between four incredibly talented human beings. Oh, thank, I mean, that, that cast was insane. I remember on the first day of rehearsal, just being like, oh, okay, all right. It's like that, huh? You know, just some of the greatest vocalists ever. And I just feel so crazy. It's still crazy to me that I got to do that, <laughs> honestly. Well, but, and yeah, then- we were really and then you got to make a little home for yourself with Encores doing Evita next, which I'm sure was also a dream situation oh, as well. Yes, City Center has kind of been this home for me since I've gotten to New York. I got to do um, the Sunday in the Park with George before I went to Broadway. Um, that was one of my kind of first jobs in the city, you know, and getting to work alongside some absolute legends. And then after that, I got to do songs for New World and then, yeah, Evita. So every every time it was like a little bit more intense. Um, but yes, yeah, City Center is always an amazing experience. It makes you feel like you can kind of like, OK, if I can do this in like five minutes, then I think like maybe everything else seems a little less scary. <laughs> So before we talk about the concert with Audible at Minetta Lane, how have you been during the pandemic? How have you felt your creative energy been met during the pandemic? And how are you doing today as we kind of carry on into the next iteration of Broadway? What an amazing question. Um, to be totally honest, I kind of came off this long run of work that I was so grateful for and that was so fulfilling in every way right before the pandemic hit. Um, but I had a lot of realizations during that time of like, you know, how important a work-life balance is and how, how much I wanted to be rooted. And I talk about that in my show a little bit, actually, is kind of the, the importance of feeling tethered to home. And what I realized during that time was that it was really, I think, a a, a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially for performers. Like we, we very rarely get the chance to just kind of, you know, relax into where we're at. Like uh, while you're working on something, something you're always kind of looking ahead. And I was like, I think this is a very unique moment. Um, you know, as, as horrible as it was in, in the macro sense, in the micro sense, it was like, okay, like, what can I glean from this? What can I take from this? And the reality was it was time to rest. And I was like, I don't think I'm ever going to have a chance. Hopefully, you know, if everything keeps going how I, how I want it to, hopefully, hopefully I don't have this amount of time to kind of be still, but it was, it was a really nice moment to sit back and be like, hey, you don't have to worry about your voice every day. You don't have to worry about talking on the phone. You don't have to worry about like eating past a certain time and how it's gonna affect you, you know? And because when your life is your voice, it, it really dominates a lot of your thought and, and time. And so I was like, if you don't take this time to play a little bit, have fun, take it easy and just do what you want when you want, you're going to be really angry at yourself. So I, I, I kind of, and I feel like I'm carrying that into this time now. Mm -hmm. um, what's really cool about this show is that, you know, I, I felt over the past year, I was like, I feel like this kind of like empty vessel almost. And I've always thought of myself as like, I am someone who takes on other people, what someone else has written and created, and I maybe elevate it and I, and I, I bring it to, you know, I actualize it. Um, and then with this show, it was kind of an opportunity to be like, wait a second, you, you have thoughts, you have ideas, you have creative license, and I never really given myself that permission. Um, and so this show is very much an exploration of kind of all those ideas over the past year. Um, as I discovered myself as an artist, more so as my racial identity, which has been kind of confusing. I think a lot of people went through a bit of a metamorphosis. Right. Um, 
past year of that. And so, yeah, this past year was a lot of self-discovery um, and realizing that like life has to be more than work at the end of the day. Um, but that also remembering that like, I get to do an amazingly fun thing for a living. I get to do a really, really fulfilling thing for a living. So when I do, when it does start to tip into a place that it doesn't feel good anymore, it's kind of a second to be like, okay, what, what right. can I change, you know? So the concert, it's an evening with Soleil Pfeiffer and it's audibles, uh, at the, audible with Audible at the Mineta Lane, excuse me, but it starts Thursday, November 4th, runs through Saturday, November 6th. How did the concert come to be? Because it's, it's such an amazing opportunity and that theater is so lovely and so intimate. So I'm curious how the opportunity came to be with Audible. I have to tell you, I, someone must have pitched me because it really was just like, I wish there was a more interesting story, um, but someone over there, I, I think it was a, a really, it was a really amazing feeling, honestly, because when everything stopped, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to have to start from scratch as far as like hoping that people, you know, re remember and, and me and want to work, you know, I think there's no one who wasn't affected by that feeling a little bit, whatever, right. whatever working in um but when this came along I was like oh okay like all that hard work and all that passion that was put into things like songs for new world like it, it didn't go unnoticed um and so it kind of came out of the blue I was like I, I feel like a little bit because I'd been saying to myself and my friends I was like I actually would really love to write I would really love to do my own thing and I'm learning so much about um, what it means to kind of be the centerpiece of something. It's a totally different feeling when you're just hoping people come to see you, you know, it's a whole different thing. And so the whole process of this has been such a gift and such a, a challenge in a lot of ways, but in the best way. Um, and it's been a big growing moment, you know, which after, after the moment of stillness, like I couldn't have asked for like a better way to kind of can them all back into it um, and get to do it in New York City of all places, you know? And you've played, you've played huge houses. I mean, uh, city center is a huge theater. You've played national tour theaters, et cetera. But to go from that to such an intimate space with Manetta Lane Theater, um, are you kind of changing things up a little bit performance style wise to kind of play to that intimate crowd? You know, I think there, yeah. I mean, the, the thing about this moment is that it is not a character, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very much me sharing my story um, of literally just my, my life thus far um, in hopes that it might help someone else feel a little less alone. That is my main goal. Like when I'm talking to my mom, my mom is just like, don't even worry about who comes. Don't worry about anything. Try to reach one person, honestly. I feel like that's almost like a cliche at this point, but that has been my main goal. And I, and I think ultimately with any performance it kind of feels that way. Like when I, my first job out of college was at the Hollywood Bowl, which is like 18,000 people. Yeah. But I think there's nothing, there's no greater gift you can give yourself than just being present, just being as present as possible. Um, and trying to honor the truth of the moment. And like, I think there's a Lady Gaga quote that's just like, play every like arena, like it's a dive bar and every dive bar, like it's an arena. Um, and how I feel about this show in particular is that like, I know if you're, if you're buying a ticket to come see me in concert, I probably have a pretty good idea of what kind of person you are. We're probably kindred spirits. I know what you're hoping to hear. Um, and I'm hoping to just give, you know, the people who are, I'm just so honored that anyone would act, is going to come. So, you, and, and especially in this time, like coming, coming and sharing space with people is like kind of a, a big decision to make mm -hmm. in a way. Um, and so this feels, it's all direct address. I am speaking as like, like this house is like my best friends and I'm sharing just like really being like, here's my heart, <laughs> here's my life, here's my identity. Um, and all in hopes of just being like, I really hope you get to know me better. And in its specificity to my life, hoping it, it reaches a more kind of universal um, audience. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you give a, a, a little bit of a sneak peek of some of the songs that we'll be hearing during the concert? Yes, I, I am definitely singing. Um, I'm singing I'm Not Afraid of Anything, which I, I posted a little while ago. Um, 
I was like, hypothetically, if I was doing a show, like what would you guys <laughs> want to hear? And there were three things that I got overwhelmingly in the comments. And that was people wanted some Piazza in there. They wanted Songs for New World and they wanted Rainbow High. And so you may or may not be hearing those. And they also wanted Hamilton. So, you know, I, I, I think I would be remiss to uh, not include the greatest hits. Sure. Um, but yeah, so I've got some of the classic songs from like the shows that really have given me the career that I've had thus far. But I also have songs that were written by friends who I admire so much. I have songs from my childhood, songs from shows that the cast album hasn't been released yet. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, I think people, are going to get a little bit of genre whiplash to be honest but you know I think that's okay you got to keep them on their toes you got to keep it going you got to keep it interesting and I love that because sometimes sometimes concerts can get a little stagnant and the fact that you're keeping it very interesting with many many different genres and different writers I think is a testament to who you are as a performer too to not to not keep it the same thing over and over Yes, yeah, and, and I've been so, so lucky to be able to get to do like golden age shows and, and modern shows. Like I've been able to really, you, like I, I think it's, it's a very lucky thing to be able to utilize, utilize like every part of your voice in your career. You know, a lot of people get like, I've been so lucky to not get pigeonholed into one genre right. place. Um, and so, yeah, I was just like, I'm just gonna sing the songs that I love and the songs that I know they wanna hear. I'm gonna give the kids what they want. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think hopefully people will leave feeling like they've had like a full meal musically. Well, you can still find out more about the concert by going to audible.com, find out all about the concert. It is Thursday, November 4th through Saturday, November 6th. Um, I know that there are a couple things on the horizon for you, a couple film projects we can't really talk about, but I do know uh, almost famous is slated to come to Broadway. Is any anything we can talk about with some almost famous news? I mean, I I have no. It, it's such a crazy thing to be so excited about all these things that are coming up. And, and yeah, like my movie, we're allowed to say what it is, which is exciting. It's um, called the Jasmine's Blues. It's gonna be on Netflix sometime next year. Um, and so I, I cannot share the specifics um, of dates and when and where necessarily, but I can share that I'm really proud and really excited. Um, and I think, yeah, all the, we, we had such an amazing reception of Almost Famous in San Diego. Um, I think we couldn't have possibly known how, how much the meaning of the show, you know, this is a show that's all about people coming together and the love of music and it's super nostalgic and takes place in 1973 when people, you know, when it wasn't dangerous to congregate and sing together and be in a space, you know what I mean? And so right. I, I think it is the exact like antidote to the general, you know, stress hanging over us right now. And it'll give people, you know, a couple hours <laughs> of their evening where they can just be like, ah, yes, times used to be simpler, you know? Um, are we gonna, so are we gonna hear some Almost Famous in the concert potentially? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I mean, it, it's such a joy getting to sit, sing Tom Kitt's music. Like, I, I, you know, I was such a such a fan growing up, still am, and it blows me away that I get to do it. But yeah, the, the music, even the music in there is like a totally, I was like, okay, this is a whole different thing, almost living more in like the folksy world. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you don't always have to be belting high E's to get the people to pay attention. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm really, I'm just, everything that's coming up, I feel crazy lucky and crazy excited and very impatient. <laughs> I am, Seriously. I'm so, <laughs> I am so, especially when it comes to, like I'm so used to like the instant gratification of like, okay, here's opening night and and waiting for, um, wait, waiting for the release of that for like, you know, all of America to potentially see is a crazy feeling, but it's it's an amazing place to be after, well, especially after the year. I'm glad that people are gonna see you back on stage with this concert. Also, all the other projects that you have coming up. I think you have one of the most versatile, beautiful voices within the Broadway world right now. So I can't wait to see you back on a Broadway stage. Of course, literally, I'm telling you, I listen to you all the time with songs for New World. I'm obsessed. And I say that with all sincerity because it's such a beautiful cast album. Thank you so much. So really again, we're gonna link to the concert below, but again, don't miss this concert. I, I promise you it's going to be probably one of the best things out there right now. So. Soleil, thank you so much for joining iHeartRadio Broadway today. Thank you so much for all your beautiful words. I really appreciate the time and just thank you. Thank you.
iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing.